Hi Barbie! If you're new here, welcome! My name is Midge Munster and on this channel we do all things campy, kooky, glamorous, and spooky. Welcome back Glamour Ghouls! I am so excited for today's video. This video is actually something I've had on my to-do list for over a year. And then once the Barbie movie was announced, I knew I had to do this project. But originally this idea was inspired by an artist that I love over on Instagram by the name of Classy Creeps. They did this adorable Malibu Barbie art probably two years ago. And the minute I saw it, it just flooded me with inspiration. Specifically because, if you do not know, Midge is Barbie's redheaded best friend that was introduced in 1963. That's right, I'm a Barbie. <laughs> in fact, I even keep this in my studio. This is an original Barbie and Midge best friends travel pals case from 1963. And I absolutely love the graphics on it. But Midge was the OG redheaded Barbie and she is often forgotten about because Midge has had a very checkered and storied past and Mattel has done her dirty several times. <laughs> to be frank with you, the original Midge doll is pretty homely. She is not very cute and it's not her fault they gave her a just ridiculous little paint job and silly little haircut, but we love her. <laughs> but she has been pulled from shelves multiple times, including in my lifetime, they introduced Happy Family Midge, who was pregnant and had a baby. And because her doll was sold in a box by herself without a male partner present, people were outraged that she was going to condone teen pregnancy or baby out of wedlock, even though it's canon that she's married to Alan. But anyway, it was a huge uproar and she was pulled from shelves and that was the last time we saw Midge in stores. And while that seems like maybe something that would have happened a long time ago, that was just in 2002. But since her removal from the Mattel rotation, she has been in a couple other things, including a television appearance in Barbie's Life in the Dream House. And most recently, she was in the Barbie movie. I was so excited when they released press for this movie and they had Midge. And of course they did Happy Family Midge because they did not shy away from showing Barbie dolls that were controversial or were pulled for various reasons. I was a little disappointed. I did go see the Barbie movie on Friday. It was so good, so much fun. It was also just so cool to see everybody dressed up and so excited to be there. It was just a blast. But Midge does not have a single line in the movie. <laughs> So once again, <laughs> anyway, I knew that I had to do my namesake some justice and I figured with her history being what it is, what's one more controversial Midge doll? So today we're going to be making Midge's Dream Crypt. Like I said, I was super inspired by this art from Classy Creeps and the idea of Barbie having a coffin shaped box. I've been thinking about this ever since I bought my giant coffin off Facebook Marketplace last year. Or was that two years ago? Time means nothing. Anyway, ever since I bought that coffin and saw that image, I thought, well, we have to do it. So let's get started on turning this life-size coffin into my very own Midge Barbie box. I need to get the coffin in the basement, but really the only way to do that is to take it outside. <laughs> in July, past all my neighbors' houses to go around the back to my basement. Oh well. <laughs> and they are mowing. Perfect. Okay, so joke's on me. I guess I'm just super conditioned for my crappy neighbors who hate me and everything I do for some reason. <laughs> so this neighbor over here who's fairly new to the neighborhood was mowing his yard and he like opened my back gate for me and was like, that's super cool. And I was like, thanks. I might have lied a little bit. I said it was a Halloween prop, which it is. I was like, oh yeah, it's, it's a Halloween prop. Like it hadn't been sitting in my dining room for the last nine months. <laughs> but anyway, woo, cool neighbors. We got it downstairs. <laughs> Sometimes I really resent being strong because I just want to be like, oh, it's so small and tiny. Please do it for me. We got it. It's downstairs. 
time to work. So we've got it stripped down and cleaned. I realized that the fabric was wrapped around a ledge, but I didn't know the ledge was finished in the black as well. I think I might want to leave this exposed for our purposes to make it look more like a box because I think the fabric coming out is going to ruin that illusion. There's a little bit of a lip on the inside here where we could definitely attach the fabric to the inside of the lip rather than out here. I don't know. We'll, we'll take a look when we do that. The other option would be just to paint the inside and not do fabric, which would almost be my preference if it weren't for all the residue from the previous fabric. I'm not sure just yet what we're going to do about that. But before we do anything, we've got to paint this thing pink. So I guess I will find out if sanding will take off this residue on the black on the outside. If it does, great. And if it doesn't, I don't know. I'm going to prep this and then let's paint it pink. Yay! I can't wait to see it. <laughs> It is day two. I love the way this color dried. It's the perfect shade of pink. So today is lining day and hopefully finishing this. Uh, this isn't like a super intensive project. So we're going to get the lining in and then paint the bottom with the midge lettering and then add a few spooky details and then hopefully we'll be done. 
I went back and forth pretty heavily on what I was going to do for the lining. I tried black and white stripes like the original Barbie's swimsuit, but then also obviously it's a little bit spooky. It's very Beetlejuice-esque. Originally what I really wanted is to do spider webs and I couldn't find a spider web fabric that I really liked. I found these two and they were fine, but I really wanted white with black spider webs and the spider webs were too small on the white and the one that looked the best print wise. The black I thought would be too heavy on the inside of this. I really wanted the inside to be white. What was so funny is like, I'm so desensitized to spooky stuff anymore that I was really having the thought of like, if I don't put spider webs or something on the inside of it, then it's not gonna be spooky. It's just gonna be pink. And then I had to like stop myself and I was like, Midge, it's a coffin. <laughs> it's already spooky. So I decided to go with a classic like velvet coffin lining. I found this really pretty, just like kind of cream white. Oh gosh, don't get dirty. Velvet at Joanne. Yeah. I think that's going to be really nice. And it's really, really stretchy, which is nice because we got to fit it into all these little nooks and crannies. So I guess we'll just jump into it. I got some spray adhesive. We're going to go in here first and just make sure the fabric's kind of tacked where we want it. And then I'll go in with a staple gun on the interior edges here and just make sure it's extra supported and really locked in there. So let's do it. some developments since we last spoke. So as you kind of saw a little bit, basically the place that I started with the fabric was not the right choice and I couldn't do it all in one go. So I ended up having to kind of cut the fabric and fit it where I could. <laughs> Meaning that now we kind of have some uh, kind of rough unsightly edges on the fabric. So in order to remedy that, I went and cut just some strips of cardboard that were the right size for these gaps and just wrapped them in fabric and hot glued them. <laughs> Nothing fancy, uh, but I think it's gonna work and gonna finish off these edges in a way that looks really clean and nice. Yeah. So we're just gonna glue those babies in where they go and hopefully <laughs> Hopefully that looks good and it looks purposeful and um, just makes everything look a little bit more clean and put together. So I'm gonna work on gluing these down and we'll see what that looks like at the end.
So the last thing we have to do for the interior is a cushion. And <laughs> I decided to make a new cushion because the one that they had used before is pretty dingy and gross and also was like uneven from the get-go like when I bought this it was hanging off one side weird and like just didn't didn't fit the seat right so I have all this extra batting from an old project and I'm gonna cut this part off but I think if I just layer it a couple times it looks like it's gonna hit just perfectly at the height that I want it to and then we'll just cover that in the rest of the fabric and spray adhesive it down and I think we'll be in pretty good shape to move on to adding the paint details and things like that. So let's get started on the seat. So after a bit of trying with that batting, I decided to go ahead and make a new foam cushion just for the shape to look really nice and finished in that space. So I just cut a couple of sheets of foam to size and stacked them on top of each other to get the desired thickness I wanted, and then coated them with spray adhesive and the remaining fabric from the interior of the coffin. I also made sure when wrapping this to make relief cuts in the corners of the fabric just to make nice, tidy edges. I'm so glad that I ended up deciding to make a fresh cushion for this. I think it was the cherry on top of the lining. It just made everything look really finished and clean. So the last thing to do was to paint on my little midge tag for my Barbie box. I started with black paint so that the lettering would have a drop shadow and then just free handed my name onto the bottom of the box. I was pretty happy with the way this came out, honestly. I wanted it at a slight angle like the Barbie logo. And then instead of where they normally have the little TM, I put a little bat next to the name and I thought that turned out really cute. Once the black completely dried, I just went over it with white paint and left a little bit of the black showing, like I said, to make that little drop shadow on the name. Then I just added the last finishing details. I had Taylor 3D print this spider web for me and ended up kind of cutting it into two pieces, one for each opposite corner of the coffin. And I had these glittery 3D printed bats from Sinister Signs. I thought this would make a cute little design for the interior of her box. So I just hot glued these to the back of the fabric. And with that, we are all finished and it's time to see the reveal. New from Mattel, it's Midge's Dream Crypt. That's right, this year for her 60th anniversary, we're bringing this doll back from the dead. It's Midge! What could possibly go wrong? And this time she comes with her very own Dream Crypt. Do you guys ever think about dying? Well, this Barbie definitely does. With fun accessories like a coffin purse, planchette earrings, or even earrings with her own name on it so you can't ever forget about Midge again. The Dream Crypt set also includes limited edition bat sunglasses and a special collector's box. This pink coffin features black sparkling bats and spider webs, all of Midge's favorite things. And it comes with a plush white fur rug that matches her coffin lining. 
perfect for activities like putting hexes on the people who pulled her from the shelves with her cute pink Ouija board. That's right, this midge is a witch and she's out for vengeance. So hurry, grab your Midge's Dream Crypt Collector set today while supplies last. Take her home or else. Midge's Witchcraft Accessories have sold separately. And there you have it. I will say this project was a uphill battle from the start. Everything that could go wrong did go wrong. But in the end, I am so happy with how it came out. I think it's just absolutely adorable. And I think it's so fun that with the trend of everybody taking photos in the big Barbie boxes at the movie theaters right now that I have my own special Barbie box that no one else will have. I have absolutely zero clue what I'm going to do with it now. <laughs> I would love to put it in the studio in here, but there's no, there's no room. So I don't know, maybe we'll leave it downstairs for the time and I can use it to film in a different location every now and again. But it's just so stinking cute. I love it so much. I wish I could take it with me everywhere I go and just stand next to it. <laughs> I do want to say a quick thank you before we wrap up today. These midge earrings that you saw me wearing in the reveal are from Zombie Lounge and she has a great shop, lots of fun spooky stuff, lots of cute earrings, and she was making Barbie ones and I had basically put a, a call out on the internet being like, can anybody make me these Barbie earrings I keep seeing online but make them say midge? And within an hour or less, Zombie Lounge had gotten back to me and had already made them and was like, where do I send them? They're in the mail. <laughs> so thank you so much, Zombie Lounge. I love these earrings. I'm gonna be wearing them absolutely all the time. You can check out her shop at the link in the description box. And be sure to go see the Barbie movie. I want to, of course, acknowledge that the actors and writers unions are both on strike right now. And while Barbie is technically a struck production, there is no call currently for consumers to boycott productions. In fact, the unions are asking that we continue to support their work and see films in theaters so that we can show the value that these productions have. So please go support a local theater, go see the Barbie movie and have a wonderful time I really enjoyed it. It was so much fun and way more heartfelt than I ever expected it to be. I think it will really surprise you. And if you've already seen it, be sure to drop me a comment and let me know what you thought. One last thing today, I am on my way this week to Midsummer Scream out in Long Beach, California. So if you're gonna be at the convention and you see me, be sure to stop me and say hi. Let's take a picture together, let's chat. I hate getting messages where people will say like, oh, I saw you and I was too nervous to say hello please, please, please feel like you can come up and say hi to me. I would love to talk to you. And if you're not attending the convention, I will have a recap video coming to the channel and Penny and I will do our Midsummer Scream recap episode over on Ghoul's Night in Pod. So be sure to keep an eye for both of those. Thank you all so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed a, a little bit of a detour from our typical kind of content, but when I come back from Midsummer Scream, it is Halloween time. We are gonna be doing lots of prepping for Halloween season, crafting, making things for my Sleepy Hollow haunt. So be sure if you're not already to subscribe to the channel before you leave today, you're not gonna want to miss any of those videos. And if you want bonus content from me, you can always check out my Patreon at the link in the description box below. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day and until next time, keep it campy, kooky, glamorous, and spooky. Bye Barbie. <laughs>